it's on there. Okay, well, thank you, Emily, and thank you, travelers, for joining us this evening and welcome you, welcoming us into your homes. Let's get right to it. We are, Boutique Escapes is a family-run tour operator. There are four of us in the company, and what we do is, through Emily, we provide to you beautiful, custom, personalized itineraries through Europe. And our goal, as would be Emily's, is to make sure that your trip to Europe is somehow getting you to know the locals, as well as seeing all of the major sites that you should see. So we want you to see everything a tourist should see, but also get to know the locals. And by getting to know the locals, we hope, our hope, is that you will see that cultures are different throughout Europe. Even Italy itself, for example, will have different cultures from the south to the north to the center area. And we want you to experience those cultures and see that they are different, not better, not worse, just different. Let's start with Italy and see what we've got. Let's dream a little bit. This is the beautiful monument to Vittorio Emmanuel that was put up in Rome. This monument to Vittorio Emmanuel is important because this is the man who united all of Italy and it's one of the main buildings that you see when you're in Rome. So the hotels that we choose for our clients are actually in the ancient historic center. That means you are walking distance to these monuments. You really rarely, if ever, have to take a, a metro. Uh, often you won't even need a taxi, depending exactly how far you're going and where your hotel is situated. Our hope is that you're walking around and taking a look what's above ground rather than looking at what's underground. So, of course, right behind the, the statue of the uh, monument to Vittorio Emmanuel, is the beautiful and iconic Colosseum. It has been redone. So any of you watching, if you've been there already, it may have been a little bit on the city side. Today, it has been cleaned by the fashion house Todd's. And you can even see from this picture that it is quite pink. Uh, something that I noticed was quite fabulous about it once it was cleaned. Not far from the Colosseum, and right on your personal itinerary, we will tell you directions, including giving you a map on how to find a small church that's about a 12 minute walk from the Colosseum that has a wall of Michelangelo statues. So this is definitely off the beaten path for tourists. When you're at the Colosseum, you'll probably see 20, 30,000 people there. That, that's approximately how many they see in a day. When you go to this small church, you may be looking at these statues with only 20 people around you. Quite a difference when you go somewhere off the beaten path. Of course, heading over, we get you to uh, Piazza Navona. And something else that we'll tell you on your itinerary is that just to the left, actually, of the obelisk that you're looking at there are many little side streets with a lot of local trattorias. All of these, many, many of them are listed on your custom itinerary. We will even make restaurant reservations for you if it's a special occasion. And if you want to have, uh, you know, some kind of a special meal there, you want to have maybe a little birthday cake, something special for a birthday, we can arrange that for you. But we do offer many ideas for fabulous restaurants in the area. And of course, something we always tell clients to do in the evening is to wander the streets and see the monuments at night. Here is the Fountain of the Four Rivers, the Bernini statue in the evening. And <clears throat> as you walk about 10 minutes away from Piazza Navona, you come across Piazza della Rotunda and the Pantheon. The Pantheon is the, uh, the best preserved ancient monument in Rome. Currently, there is a fee to go in. It's about six or nine euro. Used to be free. So if you've been there before and you remember going and not having to pay, that's changed. You now do have to pay to go in, but absolutely worthwhile to go inside. And again, our hotels are maybe a five, 10 minute walk from these monuments. Little side streets where we have found the beautiful boutique hotels. These are not your big box hotels that are on the outside of the cities, more in the suburb areas. These are really in the heart of the cities. The Trevi Fountain, of course, the largest fountain in Rome. It was also just cleaned, uh, cleaned by uh, the House of Fendi. And you can see how beautiful and white it is. If you've seen it when it was dirty, it is magic to see it cleaned up. 
Hadrian's Tomb, another 2000 year old monument. If you've read the book or seen the movie Angels and Demons, you're gonna to wanna to have a visit here. We often suggest that clients have uh, skip the line tickets, which Emily would make sure is in your package if you're interested in seeing uh, Hadrian's tomb. And of course, from there, we're only about a 15 minute walk to the Vatican Museums. What we like to do is put you on tours where you are not surrounded by thousands and thousands of people. If you take a look at this photograph here, you can see there's almost nobody in the picture. Uh, we would have you experiencing the museum very uh, early in the day when there might only be 2, peop uh, 200 people around you in the Sistine Chapel rather than 2,000 people surrounding you in the Sistine Chapel. And literally, this museum sees around 25 to 30,000 people a day. So you want to get in here at the best possible time. This is how we customize your package for you. Here, of course, is the Sistine Chapel and your beautiful tour guides, whoever that may be, will go over this with you outside of the Sistine Chapel using photographs because they are not allowed to speak inside and they will go through what you're looking at, the Michelangelo um, frescoes, as well as the important artwork that's along the outside of the, just below the Sistine Chapel ceiling there work by Botticelli, Perugino, Sandro, many beautiful pieces that are in, in there as well. And of course, the piece that everybody wants to see, The Creation of Man by Michelangelo. Our guides will get you the back way to St. Peter's Basilica, so you're not in a two mile long lineup to get in. And once inside, you'll have a short tour and often it starts with La Pieta. So I will often recommend right on your itinerary that when you, you're done with the guide, you say goodbye to the guide and go back and take another look at the Pieta because to get back into St. Peter's Basilica, you're lining up for in an hour and a half, two hours. And if it's in hot weather, it is not enjoyable. Just another shot. This one is very early morning. On Wednesdays, of course, there's a papal audience. Anyone can go. If you want to sit down, you have to have a ticket. Keep in mind, there are up to 80,000 people in this square at that time. But you certainly can see the light, how the light hitting it at this time is magic on this building. And of course, as I said before, we love recommending to our clients to take a visit of these monuments at night. They are absolutely beautiful, all lit. And of course, the Spanish steps, you should know that you can no longer sit on the Spanish steps. That's why this photograph has no people in it. There is a hefty fine. There are people walking around to make sure you do not sit on the steps. It's no longer the same kind of bustling fun area, I want to say, that it was before. Still lots of people, yes? Yeah, I was reading that. Is that because of COVID or had that happened just before? It was prior to COVID and it was because the steps were being ruined. Uh, they are you know, hundreds of years old and they were noticing that they were starting to chip and wear away mm -hmm. on the edges like we might see here from acid rain. They're seeing that from tourists sitting on it and simply from heels on it, shoes on it, etc. So nobody can go and it's a hefty fine. It's about Euro 400 and they have been giving them out. So absolutely, you want to make sure that you're not. And there are signs up saying do not sit here now, but you can see why it's also beautiful without. We highly recommend Piazza Navona at night. It gives you a lot of atmosphere as well. Here are the Vatican Museums at night. Keep in mind, whoever's watching me here, we tend, we don't put clients in this area in Vatican City. It is very quiet at night. Sidewalks pretty much roll up, not much going on. Where you're gonna find some of the great local restaurants, uh, a lot of, lot of happenings going on by small piazzas is Trastevere, the area of Campo di Fiori, uh, the area of Piazza Navona. So those are probably a good 30 minutes walk from this area here. Nice to go see at night, but we recommend that you stay in an area where you get the biggest bang for your buck and you can really wander at night and, and enjoy it. What would Italy be without the markets? Just a few shots of uh, shot of the market there. This is a Jerusalem artichoke, one of the specialties of Rome when it's in season. Unbelievable. Of course, a caprese salad, uh, unbelievable as well. Something that should not be missed. Just the freshness of the tomatoes and the basil that you'll have in Italy. And of course, a pasta dish. Generally, most of the dishes you're going to see are ho with homemade pasta. Of course, depending on the touristy kind of restaurant you might 
be inclined to go to. It might not be homemade, but we provide you with the list of fabulous restaurants. You can also walk by restaurants and see them making that homemade pasta and then choose to go into that restaurant and you know that pasta has just been made that day. Nothing like it for melt in your mouth. And of course, it's also big on your meats, your salamis. Let's head over to the Renaissance city of Florence. We think of Rome, we think of ruins, we think of all, all roads lead to Rome. We think of the Colosseum, we think of the magic of the Roman Empire. When we get to Florence, we think of the end of the Middle Ages. So people were, you know, couldn't, were, they were barely able to put food on the table. They were certainly not thinking about beauty that was around them. It was simply uh, looking at survival in the Middle Ages. Now we have this rebirth of everything that is beautiful, beautiful clothing, beautiful artwork, culture, food, wine. We have politics, we have classical thinking coming back in. So we're late 19, uh, 1300s, early 1400s, and we have the magnificent Brunelleschi dome that you're looking at on the Duomo in Florence. I also want you to notice how low the buildings are. They really do enjoy la dolce vita. They don't want to feel like they've got all these huge apartments that are converging on them. They want the feel of a small town, even though it's a it's a rather you know a larger city. Here we have, of course, the baptistry of uh, San Giovanni that's right outside of the Duomo. We always recommend a ticket, and we put tickets in your package. Uh, this is the magnificent ceiling. You can see some of the pink and green and white marble that's used uh, along the uh, outside edge of the baptistry inside. Take a look at the Duomo, absolutely breathtaking. This is all stone from the area, marble and travertine from the area, Giotto bell tower on the right. And of course, we also include a ticket for you to climb the either the dome and the bell tower or one or the other, depending on how motivated you're feeling the day that you have that ticket to climb all those stairs. So beautiful views from up there. And from this picture, you can see the hills of Tuscany around Florence. Of course, the main square, Piazza Signoria, with the um, Palazzo Vecchio, where, of course, the Senate would meet. You would have the uh, people who ran Florence. All of the uh, people involved in the guilds would be in this building and making life comfortable, much more comfortable for Florentines than it was 100 or 200 years previous. So a beautiful building to go into. And then to the right of that, we have the offices of the uh, Medici family. This is the uh, Uffizi Gallery. Today it's a an art gallery. And here is, of course, the Botticelli, the most famous painting inside. We have tours that will take you inside. When you're done with the tour, you can wander on your own or you can head out or go back and look at your favorite painting. And of course, the iconic Ponte Vecchio at night. Remember, it used to be full of butchers, slaughterhouses. And then when the Medici family had to use the bridge to get to the offices of uh, Florence, they wanted all of the smelly butchers out and they brought in beautiful goldsmiths. That tradition is still held today. The bridge is full of goldsmiths who will sell you beautiful pieces of gold while you're in Florence. And if we're in Florence, why not have a trip to Tuscany? We absolutely recommend Tuscany. If you can swing it for a handful of nights, even better. There is so much magic in Tuscany and to see it in the evening as the light hits it in a certain way is absolute romance, excitement and magic. So this is San Gimiano. The square is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And we will have clients either stay in the actual town itself. You can see how little it is. This is it. Or clients can come in during the day and, and stay in a bed and breakfast nearby. But it's certainly something to wander at night. During the day, there are a lot of tourists. Here's a little street. This is a typical street leading out of San Gimiano. You can see the little shops on the side. This one that I chose to show you today, ceramic work. Italians are known for their ceramic works. This is a higher end shop. There are of course touristy shops where you for five, six euro, you can buy a piece of uh, ceramic. These are the finer pieces. You can ship them home or you can take them with you. If you choose a bed and breakfast, we have some incredible places. This one happens to be in the heart of the Chianti Classico region. And it's not far from Rada in Chianti. The hills you're looking at there produce some of the finest. Chianti Classico Reserva that you will find anywhere. 
and just another beautiful picture of the wineries. Talk about a relaxing vacation after the hustle and bustle of Rome, seeing some of the sights in Florence, and then heading over to a magical place, Tuscany, where it's quieter. You can breathe, it's open spaces. Take a look at this picture taken in October. You can see the vines are turning yellow, but what a beautiful time of year. Temperatures, high 60s, low 70s. Light jacket or a sweater, excellent time for touring. And of course, we will include wine tours should you want them, either a full wine day or one winery or two. And I've ended this with uh, the magic of, of uh, Venice, La Serenissima, of course, one of the most important city states from four, five, six hundred years ago. Lots of money there. St. Mark's Square, of course, the hub of Venice. And what you're looking at here, the Basilica, doesn't matter how many churches you've been into in Italy, this one is different. It has flavors of the Ottoman Empire and the Turkish and Arab world. So many, many tiny uh, mosaics inside this building. The walls are covered in mosaic. The ceiling is covered in mosaic rather than the frescoes that you see throughout the rest of Italy. And then, of course, we've got the Rialto Bridge. You can't miss that. You got to have a walk over that, take some pictures, have some photographs on the bridge. The Doge's Palace, another must-see site inside some amazing artwork from of the big, some of the big artists in the Italian art world inside here. Of course, we have 1200 years of Doge history in Venice. This palace is magnificent inside. And what would a trip to Venice be without a gondola ride? And as touristy and cheesy as it might sound, there is nothing like hearing about it your whole life and then sitting on one and almost laughing to yourself. I can't believe I'm on a gondola in Venice. We can do private gondola for you or we can put you in a flotilla. The picture that you're looking at here has about, there's maximum six people on a gondola. If you do private, it can be just the two of you and there are only two seats. So if it's a special occasion, you may want to do a private gondola. And if you have time, of course, see the islands of Murano and Burano. Burano is one of the most uh, Instagrammed places in Europe. And it's because of these beautiful buildings. We do all of Italy. We also do all of Europe. Um, but one of our favorite places, of course, is Positano, the, the town on the cliff. So I wanted to end with this one just to let you know that there, that Italy is so rich in culture, history, architecture, food, wine, diversity of landscape, you could go back every year and still see something different. So if you are interested and um, you let Emily know and the more specific you can be with what you wanna see and what your budget is, how many of you are traveling? Are you going with young kids? Is it just adults? And if it's children, uh, are the kids really little? Are they good on a nice sofa bed or do you want them in individual beds? All of that gets looked after as long as you can be specific and letting Emily know what it is exactly you're looking for. And then we have you on your way. I will turn it over and back to you, Emily. Oh my gosh, I love it, Susan. It's so great. Um, guys, the reason I love to be able to work with Susan is because you can obviously tell on what she's saying, you know, they know the little spots that you may not know, you know, booking other places. And so that's why I really like to be able to work with her is because she often has those spots that, you know, she has been there and experienced it and seen it and her team, they're amazing. Um, another thing that I really love uh, about working with Susan it, to deliver this to my clients is, you know, she says, I think in every webinar or training I've ever been on with her is, you know, I'd rather you be in a three star in the middle of everything that's amazing than pay for a five star that's off, you know, seven, ten, seven to 10 blocks. Um, and we know that these are great. We have relationships with these hotels. And if I said that wrong, Susan, I think that's that kind of captures what you've said uh, several times in the past is, you know, we'd rather, and I do get a lot of people who say that, you know, I want to go to Europe. I don't want to spend um, a ridiculous amount on the hotel. I want to go see and do the tours and, and all that. And that is exactly what I would be go saying going into making my own itinerary. So I really understand that when we're talking to clients and, and Susan certainly does as well. So I want to open bringing that up Emily because I was going to say with us location is everything so that you know that beautiful three-star that we have found that we stay in that we know and we have a relationship with the 
people at the front desk. And sometimes we can even ask for a specific room number. We know them so well, um, but better to have it in an area where five minutes outside your door is something fabulous that you cannot see in North America. You've right. spent all this money to get out there. Let's, let's see something that you can't see at home. You got a lot of great stuff around you, but not the 2000 year old buildings, not the right. 500, 800 year old churches, et cetera. I love that. Uh, let's open up. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to speak up or write it in the chat. Um, if you have any, I uh, had a couple of questions um, sent to me. If anybody has any. Um, Susan, somebody was asking, um, what about car rentals? Do we need a car rental in Italy or, well, I mean, since we're talking about very Italy. Yep, very good question. We do not recommend car rentals in Rome. We do not recommend them in Florence, but if you're going to go into Tuscany, absolutely. If, and I drive in Italy every year when I'm there. If you're driving in Tuscany, they are smaller roads. Yes, there's a few main highways to get you to some area where you're gonna take off an exit quickly, <laughs> but in bottom line is you're on smaller roads anyways. And there are not a ton of people like you'd find in Rome or Florence. In fact, in Rome and Florence, there are uh, areas of the city where you have to have a permit to drive in that area. Otherwise it's a stiff fine. So leave that to the private drivers, leave that to, you're gonna be in a historic center anyways. When you're in Tuscany though, you right. want that car rental because to visit all of those amazing little towns, Assisi, Cortona, Volterra, San Gimiano, uh, Poggio Bonzi, I mean, the list goes on, Rada, Castellina, Grevi, so many cute towns. You can do two or three in one day if you have a car and we map it all out for you. So if you take a boutique escapes package, you get a huge driving map that we have purchased in Tuscany and we will mark the route for you because no matter how good GPS is, I can tell you from experience, you cannot always go what GPS tells you. They will tell you to go down a farmer's road. They'll have you in a an orchard. They'll have you on a road with you know bumps on it that'll take the bottom of the car off because it's <laughs> a road. And that's what the GPS is going to show you. So we will give you a map, and we'll even mark the route for you. We'll even give you a little write up on each city that we think is worthwhile. So yes, absolutely. In Tuscany, car rental, drop it back off in Florence, and if you want to go to Venice or Milan, you then take the train, the high speed train from there to get to the other destinations. Excellent. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so somebody else had submitted a question. What if I don't have a huge budget? Am I going to be able to make it work? Okay, that's a very good question. Um, of course, budget will dictate where you stay and how long you stay. So we have standards. Uh, when we choose a hotel, it's because we've either seen the hotel, been in the hotel, done the inspection, stayed in the hotel, maybe 5% of what we offer we've not been in, but we know of it. So if we're going to, if we're going to keep within our standards, then uh, you're absolutely right. It's going to take a certain budget. So it, does it have to be the sky's the limit? Absolutely not. Three-star hotels in great locations that we recommend, for example, my three-star in Rome, that's where we stay. We're there so often, we don't stay in you know, high-end hotels. We're there working and we want to make sure that one of our favorite three stars has a roofed, brand new rooftop bar. It has views all over the entire city and it's a two-minute walk from Campo di Fiori. It doesn't get much better than that. It's a three-star. Yeah. I mean, is it expensive? Well, sure, you're in Rome. Right. Everything's expensive. So <laughs> budget-wise, we can we can do what we can to make it work for you. Great. Okay, absolutely. Great answer. Um, any other questions tonight? I do. Uh, you've probably seen my crazy kids coming um, <laughs> to and fro, and I really am mortified because you're recording this, Emily. So... Fine. My question is, we've not done really any international, well, we've not done any international travel with our children. So Susan, what would be your, um, you know, the, the ages in which you think that these destinations might be most suitable for? Right. That's a very good question. Great question. I, I specialize in families 
and I've had you know kids as little as two and three years old. We always find something for the kids to do. So for example, if you're going to the Vatican, I would make sure that the tour you're on is a small group tour made for families. And what I like about that is your kids are gonna be with each other for the whole vacation. It's kind of fun for that two and a half hours for them to meet up with other kids who are also little. Those kids might have questions. They might strike up a little conversation among them, but it is, it is interesting and fun to meet up with other kids like that. Um, the Colosseum has tours for children. Most of the big places have. Of Obviously, if I, uh, maybe it's not obvious, but if I put you in Tuscany, your bed and breakfast would have a pool. And it would be in an amazing area so that if you and your husband wanted to sit there with a glass of wine and the kids were in the pool, you're staring at, hey there, <laughs> you're staring at, um, you know, the vineyards and dreaming because you're in Tuscany and your kids are splashing around in the pool. And yes, then please. You the car and you head over to a cute little village. They get to walk around. They get to go buy some souvenirs and maybe have a gelato in there. But you're only a 15 minute drive away. You don't feel like you have to spend two hours in this town. You're only 15 minutes drive. So go for the hour, have a gelato, walk around, see the views and then go back or maybe pick another town and go to a restaurant. I can also put you near the beach, the Italian Riviera. We were just talking absolutely about this yesterday. Yep. Absolutely amazing. So from Florence, I will have my clients uh, go to Via Reggio or somewhere along that coastline, three or four days in the Mediterranean. Unbelievable. That, that will be a highlight for the kids. And then they go back and maybe head up to Venice. And uh, I think about a cute hotel that I have in Venice. It's got space for um, it's one large bed and two smaller beds. And it's right across the, the a little bridge to a small piazza with a creperie and some of the best little sandwiches you're going to find in Venice. And around the corner from that is a, some, a, a department store. If you really need to go into a department <laughs> store, have a look in there. But it's also only 10 minutes from the Rialto Bridge. The Rialto Bridge has buskers and the kids will be dancing when they hear the music and they'll see other kids dancing. There is a lot for children to do and we tailor make it so that the kids are involved. So when they're on those tours, they'll be shown pictures. The guide will say, okay, who can count the most animals? And then they start counting them. And well, I found a little snail. Well, I found, and the guide might say, well, there are 30 all together. So then the kids are scouring again to find more animals, but they do make it very interactive while still giving mom and dad the history and what is great about what you're looking at. Does that answer your question? That's amazing. It Sue, does. Thank you. You are something else, Susan. I, I love your passion for it. You're incredible. Everybody, thank you so much for coming tonight um, for attending the Vacation Show and Tell on Europe and not just Italy, any of those, uh, any of the countries, cities, or areas that you're interested in, we can work together to create that itinerary for you. Um, so uh, you'll definitely be seeing a follow-up email with details um, of how to set up a vacation consultation. And I know that we're all waiting to stamp our passport. I don't think you can see it uh, to get to, to Europe. And some parts of Europe are opening um, or set to open and have, we're starting to see dates. So um, Susan and I were talking yesterday, uh, the best thing to do is to set that up ahead of time, get some ideas going, let's start working on where, where and what and when, get you set up for next year. And before I, I don't wanna close up cause I see Christy's got a question. So go right ahead, Christy. I was just gonna ask about that um, with things, you know, being, um, in a state of flux, right. if we were to book something and then um, there were restrictions placed again, would things are flexible and we could transfer that to a future date? Oh, that's, Susan, go ahead. that's a very good question. And everybody should be asking that. Yeah. If you book with Boutique Escapes and chances are, we are looking at travel opening up really thinking it's going to happen for the fall of 2021. Greece says it's going to be May with some restrictions. You have to have this, that, and that. 
So um, if you plan a vacation and you're unable to go, then we are ready to offer you a future travel credit so that you can use it the following year. And we right now we have clients saying, just let's let me do 2022. Let's just start there. We have others saying, I want September 9. That's when I'm leaving and I want it this year. So it all depends how comfortable you feel going. And as long as you're comfortable in getting a future travel credit, then you're good to go. You, you'll, you won't say goodbye to your money at all. We want you to travel. We want you to get to Europe. Our main goal, and I often say this, you know, I'd love you to book with me, but I want you to see Europe. So however you get there, get there. If it's a cruise you want to do, call Emily and do a cruise, but just get to Europe. It is, it is so incredible to see. That's a great question. And that's really the number one question from clients is flexibility. Yeah. And you said you do all of Europe. I'm, is that correct? We do. We do all yeah. of Europe, including St. Petersburg. So all of Europe and St. Petersburg. And so, okay. Uh, we do that's the islands. We do and family trips. Normally, clients are asking for Italy, Greece, London, and Provence. You know, Paris down to Provence, ending in Nice or starting in Nice mm -hmm. and going back up. <laughs> Those are the four big places that I get requests for with children. Uh, but we do. All of your like big bang for your buck right now is Portugal. Portugal is, and if your kids want to go to the beach, amazing beaches in the Algarve. So many. It's Europe is such a small area compared to the United States, but so rich in diversity of what you see and and, and what you can do there. Okay. And then do you have local representatives where we're traveling to? Uh, like that very good uh, we have we spend three to four months every year in Europe of course with the exception of 2022 but one <laughs> of the team members was already there in 2020 right. so um, normally we're there for three to four months of the year normally we're there in high season so when we have the most amount of clients we're usually in Europe we troubleshoot before anything is happening on your itinerary, 24 hours ahead, we have double checked with it. Some clients, some companies will leave it with somebody in Europe, we don't. We give you four 24 seven phone numbers that will get one of us directly, one of the team members directly. And I don't care if it's three in the morning in, um, in, in North America, if you're at the train station and you can't find your driver, you WhatsApp me or you give me a quick phone call. Generally, I've got the driver on the line wondering where you are. So the <laughs> client just calls me and sometimes it's as, as easy as the client left the building instead of, you know, it said go outside of this the Rome station is basically a mall. So I'll say, go in front of this store. You can't miss it. It's a North American store, an American store. So find that store, stand there, and there's your driver. This, If you walk right out, you're going to miss the driver. So it's my, all of our itineraries are incredibly detailed. As in, walk out, turn to the right, you're going to see this. Walk five steps, turn to the left, and you're going to see this. That's where you're meeting. We are that specific with meeting points. And as long as you read and follow those instructions, it goes along and we hear from nobody. <laughs> it's, it's a system I, that definitely works. I apologize. My uh, thing is going to shut us off in the next 30 seconds. Oh, oh. I'm sorry. No, you guys are great. I'm so glad. I apologize <laughs> that I could old Zoom. And um, no, everybody, thank you so much. If you have any questions as well, Christy, please let me know. Um, Mandy, um, I will answer your question about high season. And thank you, everybody, for your time. Susan, thank excellent. you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Have a great evening. Bye bye. Have a great Bye. Evening. bye. bye.